Welcome to the Growing in Grace podcast, where you can listen in on some casual conversation about the good news of Jesus without all of the inconsistent religious double talk. If you've ever struggled with feelings of hopelessness, guilt, and despair, or wondered if you're really right with God, it's time to discover the true freedom that comes with the gospel of unlimited and overflowing grace. Oh, 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 Merry Christmas! <laughs> Do your uh, Jimmy Stewart from It's a Wonderful Life. Merry! Oh my goodness, that didn't work. <clears throat> no. Clear my throat. Take two. Merry Christmas! <laughs> not, not the not the best, not the best, but well, it's, I got news for you. It'll get worse as you get older <laughs> because <laughs> I I don't think I can do my Mr. Bill from Saturday Night Live anymore oh, like no, I used to. You can't do Mr. Bill. <laughs> You've done Mr. Bill on the show before. It, it's it's like it's like Elton John. My my daughter wanted me to watch when she was visiting uh, over uh, Thanksgiving. She wanted me to watch this Elton John concert. I think it was his last last concert in uh, Dodger Stadium. And and he you know Elton John songs they have a lot of range right. Mm-hmm. But he he would he he didn't hit all those high notes. He didn't try to. He just kind of stayed down there where it was easier for him to do so. so I I could relate to that. Hey you know. Um... You did. You used to do Mr. Bill did, on the radio. Remember? Did, yeah, yeah. Especially like during Sherathons. Um, I we <laughs> we had some of those recorded once upon a time. You know what, Joel? Um, years ago, what what program number is this? This is eighty nine one. It is eight nine one. We were on that FM radio frequency at one time. And and the people who were running uh, eighty nine one back then, Chris and Regina, um, I asked Chris if I could copy some old files that we used for promos from the morning show, and and Mr. Bill was on some of those, <laughs> me, <laughs> and and I I saved those onto like a thumb drive or something years ago, and I think I lost them. I can't find them. No, oh. huh? So. That's a downer. I know I've got old stuff from the radio station, but I don't think it would have any of that stuff on it because that was kind of before my time, sort of. Yeah, we, we had those morning show promos that we we would run throughout the day, you know, just little snippets from the morning show. But but I think we did it uh, during a share too, where, I don't know, we had some sound effects and, <laughs> and Mr. Bill was going down the toilet and all that oh! stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Bill. Yeah, that was funny. The, uh, yeah, 89... Point one FM. That's we started off. We were on AM, uh, eight fifty AM, and I remember when we did podcast number eight fifty. I forgot to even mention anything. Not that it's really of all that interest to our listeners <laughs> on the no. Growing and Grace podcast, but a little nostalgia for us. We were on eight fifty. A little, yeah, sentimental journey. Yes, and then um, we get uh, um, FM. That was in Waterloo, eight fifty AM, Waterloo, Iowa, and then in Cedar Rapids, eighty nine point one FM, and. Uh, so when we get to podcast fourteen sixty, uh, we'll also we'll also <laughs> please <laughs> we, were, we were also on that uh, for a while, but that's uh that's a little ways away if we, if we survive. That I know long. you you kind of feel at this point like ah, you know if we get to a thousand that's that's a millennium right there. <laughs> that's a lot. Who's you know who knows who knew that we would make it this far, but you know so. Merry Christmas, and uh, without getting too serious into things, you know, I had this, I had this thought, and um, you know how the 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 Santa Claus, you know, you better watch out, you better not cry, you better not pout. I'm telling you why Santa Claus is coming to town, and you'd better be good for goodness' sake. You know, a few, a few years ago, I saw this thing with um, where some atheists in London. We're taking out advertising on uh, those uh, double decker buses, and they would. What the advertising was was it. It said, "Be good, for goodness' sake," and it was. They were trying to kind of undermine and undercut, you know, the whole Christianity thing. Um, their idea of Christianity was, "You'd better be good, for goodness' sake." You know, you'd better be good, or else. And so they were just saying, "Just be good, for goodness' sake." And I thought, you know what? Without having their same kind of attitude about this, I kind of think. That that's actually not a bad thing uh, because, and I was looking at uh, what Paul said in Titus. He said, this is a faithful saying. 
And these things I want to affirm constantly, that those who have believed in God should be careful to maintain good works. These things are good and profitable to men. You know, so instead of saying, you'd better be good for goodness sake, it's just be good for goodness sake, be- because being good is profitable. It's good to be good. It's not that you have to. It's in Christ, it's not a must. It's not a should. It's a, this, is, this is the type of thing that's profitable to people. And so, you know, I think, unfortunately, with the whole Santa Claus thing, whether a person, whether you subscribe to Santa or not, you know, to the whole Santa thing or not, maybe in your house. I, mean, I grew up as a kid with Santa Claus. I knew he wasn't real. I knew that it was, is, you know, up to a certain age, I might have thought so. But it didn't scar me uh, when I found out the truth. But some people get this mindset from this whole, you'd better be good for goodness sake. Like, if you're not good, this is what parents will tell their kids if you're not good Santa's not gonna leave you any gifts or Santa's gonna leave you a lump of coal gonna put a lump of coal in your stocking and that mindset sometimes carries over into Christianity into our lives in Christ where people think that if you're not good God's gonna get you if you're not good God's not gonna give you good things and I think what Paul is saying here is that that's not what it's about at all. Uh, The reason to be careful to maintain good works or good deeds or to just, you know, be good is because it's profitable to people and it's it's part of our identity in Christ. It's really not a a must or a should. It's just who we are. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's who we've become as 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 new creations. You know, in in another place, Paul said that all things are lawful, but not all things are going to be profitable or helpful. And as a believer in Christ who has taken on this this new nature, partakers of the divine nature, children of God, an inheritance that we've received, the righteousness that we've been gifted with. Um, these are not things, unlike much of the church world, <laughs> uh, these are not things that we're striving for. These are things that are gifted to us through Christ, through God just giving them to us because he loves us as children. This is who we've become, um, not because of what we've done. We've just been born into it. But the church world, in the works department, in, in the realm of works, is, is constantly trying to become something that they think they're not, instead of realizing the importance of our identity as righteous and holy and perfected people. Um, realizing that, growing in our understanding of that, and then this be good thing just becomes kind of natural. It's it's just part, as you said, it's just, it's a part of, of who we are. So living through that identity and allowing God who abides in us to live through us by his spirit is, is going to result in that. It is going to be profitable. It's, it's going to be good for everybody. And I want to just preface that with, look, we, we understand that we're living in a, a fallen world. Many of us have made many mistakes some of them habitual. Some maybe you're still dealing with it. Uh, it. Sometimes it leads to guilt and condemnation. It shouldn't, but it does. And you know, you just need, you just need to understand that God is not holding those things uh, against you, and He wants to help you with it. Now, there may be some things in this life, in this world system, uh, where we we've, we've made mistakes and we're reaping some of what we sowed in this life. Don't confuse that with how God is relating to us through Jesus. There are things and you know mistakes that we've made that uh, had a domino effect and and led to some different circumstances within your life or your lifestyle, your family, and so forth. Um, but that's a whole separate thing from our eternity and who we are in Christ. Uh, you know, uh, we do want to wish everybody a, a, a really blessed Christmas. Um, one thing we, we stop to, to think about here is we celebra- celebrate the birth of Christ, uh, obviously taking place 30 or so years before the new covenant began when the cross came, came into effect. But in Galatians chapter 4, Paul said, when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son, who was born of a woman, born under the law, that old religious system that's now obsolete and abolished. That's what he was born under. And he did it, he, he was born of this woman, to redeem those who were under that law, the Jewish people, so that we, 
all of us eventually might receive adoption as sons. And so I just want to mention that because, you know, Jesus was born under the old Jewish law that he came to get rid of and to redeem people from because it could not give them life. Um, And so we celebrate that. We celebrate that arrival of God in the flesh um, because, and I know we have a lot of other things attached to that. You know, commercialism and and, uh, Christmas trees and all that stuff that people sometimes want to just seem to want to avoid because it seems pagan to them. Um, But we're above and beyond that stuff. You know, we can still stay focused on the reason for the season. And that doesn't mean we can't partake of some of the other stuff that comes along with it because grace is just a powerful thing. And we don't have to get into the self-righteous attitude thinking that somehow what we're doing or not doing is going to make all the difference. Right. And yeah, it reminds me of, uh, you know, 30 years ago when I was just a young pup in the Lord. I mean, I was just kind of new and really, you know, had this, you know, kind of a legalist route that was at, you know, at the center of my life. And um, at work, they had a secret Santa it, you know, basically the the idea of it is that you have one person that is, you draw names and one person is the person that when the, when the day comes and everybody buys like a little gift and that person gets a gift from you. And then so everybody gets a gift. And they asked me, do you want to, you want to take part in this? And at that time, I was like, what well, you were just talking about that had that kind of self-righteous attitude and that um, I can't participate in this type of thing because it's got the word Santa and uh, so I just, you know, I said, no, uh, no thanks. And, and then I heard somebody a um, little ways away after, uh, after she, it was actually the person who had asked me if I wanted to participate. She walked away and talked to a group of nurses and she said, you'd think that he'd be the type of person that would like to do this type of thing, you know, because it has to do with giving and all that stuff. And so as time went on, I kind of, I realized that just because it had the word Santa in it and i know all about santa and that he's not the reason for the season it's jesus you know you know this this whole thing and even though i knew all that stuff really the spirit of the whole thing was giving gifts it was you know having fun buying something for somebody and them receiving the gift i mean that's really what it was about i as a believer i can I can, like you said, I can be above all of that, above the whole, that it's about, they're making it about Santa. And I can just say, you know what? It's fun to give gifts. So nowadays, you know, if that opportunity arises, and I've done it now several times over the years, some sort of a secret Santa thing, and it's just fun. And, you know, the same thing with with decorating Christmas trees. I know in, in the Old Testament, it talks about not decorating trees, but it's it's another verse that one of those many verses that people take way out of context where the idea or, or what was happening was that the, the Gentiles were decorating trees and worshiping them. They were making trees into idols, and God didn't want the people of Israel to participate in making a tree an idol, in, in idol worship. That's really all that that was about. It has nothing to do with them today, you know, you know, you get a, an evergreen tree, you put some lights on it, you put some decorations on it, it looks nice. You know, you put some lights on your house. Um, really, in Christ, there's nothing wrong with that. It can be, it can just be fun. It's, it's a neat time of the year for us in our culture to just participate in some of these things. And we're not forsaking Jesus while we're doing it. We're not going against Jesus. We're just taking part in some cultural things that um, are neither good nor bad. Uh, you know, I see some people just going a whole against this whole thing. And in fact, in that in that passage where it talks about the the uh, pagans, the Gentiles worshiping trees, it also says, "And they wear clothes of purple and blue." And so, if you can't decorate a tree, then you also shouldn't wear those colors. <laughs> That's all I had to say about that. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you're telling me that when you decorate your tree, you don't gather your family together, light some candles, and uh, you know, start humming, you know, like mm, and bow down and worship it, and, and it's, singing it's an Santa idol. Claus songs, <laughs> uh, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, Paul talked about 
meet that back in his day, kind of a controversial thing. I'm sure people are familiar with reading this where, um, again, this is a kind of a cultural thing that we skim past when we're reading the Bible, but people would offer meat to idols. They would sacrifice, you know, they would make the right. sacrifice, offer the meat and, and then, um, partake of eating the meat afterward. Well, a lot of Jewish, uh, Christians or, you know, Jewish people who consider themselves law abiding people, uh, they didn't want to partake of that meat because it had been offered to an idol, another God. And, and Paul, you know, Mr. Grace kind of comes along and says, you know, there's really nothing wrong with eating that meat. I mean, it's just a piece of wood or whatever tree, um, you know. It's it's just not real. It's not a real god. Um, and and so I got, nothing. I, 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 yeah, I've got no problem partaking of it. But he, you know, he did he did preface it a little bit by saying, if there are those who are weak in faith who really struggle with this, uh, you might want to eat it somewhere else instead of in front of them. But uh, so yeah, I mean, there there are times where you can. You can kind of work around some of the stuff that maybe doesn't um, appear to be in line with your theology, but I, I think grace is bigger than that. Yeah, I think that's really what I have, what grace has taught me with whether it's these uh, Christmas things, whether it's uh, you know friends that I have who partake in things that I don't really want to partake in. Um, I don't have to um, not be their friend just because they want to do things. That I don't want. To, I don't have to do those things. I don't have to participate in those things. And sometimes I can if it's if there's nothing you know if there's nothing really ungodly about it. Um, sometimes there are some fun things that you can do where you're not compromising who you are in Christ, and it wouldn't necessarily be something you would do with other friends. I'm, think, I'm thinking something like I you know I used to get together with some guys and we played poker. You know, it, for. For some people, you just can't do that because it has to do with gambling. But we would do it with poker chips, uh, sometimes with nickels, dimes, and quarters. It, no one would lose big. No, it was just fun, you know. Um, but Grace has taught me that, um, you, you know, things in moderation, you know, moderation is, is key in a lot of things. Remembering who you are in Christ, knowing who you are in Christ. And I think that's part, that's a big thing because there are many people who need a list of this is right and this is wrong. You can do these things and you can't do these things because they don't know who they are in Christ. They really don't know the grace of God. They don't know how to live by the Spirit. All they know is rules because that's what the church teaches. They teach rules and regulations and you must do this and you can't do that instead of allowing the grace of God to work in your heart. And, uh, and teaching about the identity in Christ. Well, as we wrap up this Christmas um, edition of Growing in Grace, anything you want to share, Mr. Cat? No, just I uh, hope everybody has a good holiday out there and, uh, and a good year coming up. Amen. This has been Growing in Grace with Mike Kapler and Joel Brzezinski, heard online through various internet sources around the world each week. Access past programs by visiting growingingrace.org. Share it with a friend and listen again next week for more Growing in Grace.